When I was in high school, I would spend my weekends working at Indian weddings, and I would work with DJs, and I would play an instrument called the tol, which is a native Indian Punjabi drum. And so I would play this drum at weddings, and I would make a little bit of money, but I got to know a lot of the DJs. And one of the DJs in the industry said, hey, you know a lot of people, you're in high school, how about you and I work together to start hosting teen parties at a local restaurant? There was a new restaurant that popped up in our city and this restaurant was looking for some exposure and they were looking for some brand awareness and so they were willing to work with us to allow us to host parties there in exchange for us promoting the restaurant. And us promoting the restaurant doesn't cost us any money, so I figured, hey, let's do it. Now we had a venue to host the party, which was the restaurant. We had a DJ to provide the music, and then we had me, the promoter. I didn't have any extra cash to throw into this business idea, and my parents were not about to give their son some money to throw into this dumb business idea when I should be studying, and so we had to get creative. The way that we would make money is that we would charge people cover or a fee to get into the venue, but we did have costs before the party started. Like we needed to pay for security, we had to pay some money to marketing to create some flyers and so the DJ agreed that he would front the money to do these things which was maybe a few hundred bucks and then the money that we make from charging cover would first pay off these expenses and then whatever money is left after that we would split 50 50 the DJ would take half and I would take half my first party when I was in high school ended up being huge so many people ended up showing up because they were curious about what was going on but we were not ready for that and so it was just me and the DJ working and the DJ had to work at the DJ booth and I was the one trying to collect cover and run it everything else and so because I was running around a lot of people got into the venue without even paying to get in by the time we got to the end of the night everybody had a great time and now we had some cash to count and now we're counting the cash we paid off the expenses and then we finished counting out all the expenses and then we were left with a whole four dollars two dollars for the DJ two dollars for me we had spent weeks planning the event preparing for the event and getting everything ready and now to reward ourselves we had a whole two dollars each but this was the start of something a whole lot bigger for me because when I got to college I saw that everybody around me in college was partying but I didn't drink I wasn't into partying I just liked the hosting side of it because I like the business side of it you know where this is going now right so now I'm in college I see everybody partying but I don't want to spend my time partying so I'm a freshman in college and the first thing I do is I start knocking on the doors of all the clubs and venues on my college campus and I ask them hey what can I do to host a party at your venue the first club I go to says no problem just pay us ten thousand dollars and you can have the venue and host your party and do whatever you want I don't have $10,000, so that was not gonna happen. I go to the next place, they didn't answer the door. I go to the third place, they said, sure, you can do a party here, and all you gotta do is give us, the club, 50% of the cover that you earn. Now it's the exact same thing as before. I didn't have to pay any money to get the venue. I know a whole bunch of DJs, and they were all willing to work with me on a 50-50 commission. So half of the revenue would go to the club, and now we have half of the revenue left. Half of this now remaining revenue would go to the DJ, and the other half would be mine. So yeah, I didn't get to make all the money that I could have, but it was an easy way for me to get started without putting in a whole bunch of cash because now I have everything I need. Now all I gotta do is do the marketing and because I'm in college, everybody's all around you. So I would spend a few hundred dollars to print 5,000 flyers and then I would stand on the street on my college campus passing these out and I wouldn't stop until all 5,000 flyers were gone. This business grew very quickly because word spread fast about how much fun people were having at our events and second, it was easy to start with very little cash. So the first thing you have to do if you wanna be able to build a successful business is you have to be resourceful if you are not resourceful if you are not resourceful you will never be able to build any sort of successful business this is not something that you can learn how to do in books this is just something where you have to be aware of what's around you and you have to start using the resources around you because this is what will allow you to be able to build a business using whatever you have around you the easiest way to make up for your lack of dollars is just to increase your hustle now when you start making a little bit of money the next thing you're gonna start thinking about is scalability how can you take this little bit of money that you're making and scale it into something a whole lot bigger and this is where you have to understand the difference between just owning your own job and actually running a business because the issue that I had with this party promotion business was one I got sick of the business because I didn't really like the industry but second was it wasn't scalable because the way it worked is yeah I made good money I can make a few thousand dollars in a weekend but if I wasn't hosting an event if I wasn't there working 
I wasn't gonna get paid. When we talk about building a business, not just owning your own job, when I talk about building business, I mean you own a machine that will continue to produce revenue or to produce money even if you're not physically working because either you have other people working that are continuing to run the machine or you have a system, which is very important even with other people, is you need to have a system where this business can run even without you physically working. When we're talking about a business, you have to understand that there's two parts to every business if we're talking about building a real business. You have the owners and then you have the employees and so what you need to understand is when you are building a business you are both the owner and the employee but what you don't want to do if you're talking about really building a business is get stuck into understanding that you are the only owner and the only employee see when i was running the event planning business i was making decent money i was the owner of the business i was the only employee and so anytime i made money this was money that was going into my pocket but there's a difference between the money you earn from working in the business and the profit that your business makes because if i had paid myself just a regular salary salary, then now if I cut myself out, if I hired somebody else to take my position working in the business, then there wouldn't be really any profit left because now all the money is going to pay the salary and the owner, who in this case was also me, but if the owner was someone else, then the owner would be left with nothing. Let's think about it this way. I create a guacamole business that is now doing $1 million a year in revenue. I started the business myself. I created this guacamole recipe. I started selling it in stores and now stores around the country are carrying it and I'm doing a $1 million a year in revenue. So what's happening now is I'm making a $1 million but then I got to pay my expenses. I got to buy my avocados. I got to buy the salt. I got to buy all the other stuff. And all my expenses are costing me, let's just say $500,000, which means now I am left with $500,000 a year. But all this $500,000 is a profit because now I have to pay myself. And for the purposes of this example, I'm going to assume that there are no other employees in this business. So let's assume that I'm the only employee, I'm the only owner. And so now if we talk about the profit, which is the difference between what the owner gets and what the employee gets, I have to pay myself as an employee of the business, as a CEO or whatever, I have to pay myself a salary. So for the sake of this example, let's assume that a person in this position, if I had to hire somebody else to take my role in this job, I'd have to pay them $200,000 a year. So now this is $200,000 for salary, which means the business is making $300,000 of profit because I had to pay somebody, in this case it's me, $200,000 to run the business. This is the difference between running a business and just owning your own job. Because if you're running a business, now what you can do is you can find somebody else to take this job and you can own the business. You don't have that ability to do that if you are just running and owning your own job. So when we're talking about being able to scale a business, you have to understand that in order to build a real business, you have to have a business where you can pluck yourself out of the equation and have somebody else come in and do the same job. And you got to understand that, hey, this person is going to want money as the employee. Right now, you might not be paying yourself a salary because whatever is left in the business account is just money for you, but that's not how you want to be thinking if you really want to build a scalable business. You have to understand that if somebody else was in your shoes, how much money would they charge as a salary? Now, you pay yourself that as a salary, and whatever is left is the profit in the business. Once you can separate these two things, now you have the ability to build a real business because you understand that, hey, somebody else can take your spot and you can still be the owner of the business. If you enjoyed this short clip from my longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love. And while you're at it, if you're interested in learning more about how to start generating passive income, our team put together an amazing guide on how to start generating passive income for free. All you got to do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching. And as always, keep hustling.